Wolverine number 6 and X-Force number 13 make up chapters 3 and 4 of the X-Men's Ten of Swords event, focused on Wolverine's journey to get the Miramasa Blade in the Krakoa vs. Arako tournament for the rights to the new sacred mutant nation. Today I'll answer, where is Miramasa and what blade will Wolverine wield? Who is Solemn and how does the character fit as the new archvillain of Wolverine? Do you need to read all chapters of the Ten of Swords event to understand the story and theories and predictions for what's to come in the Ten of Swords event and beyond? I'm Dave Busing, founder and editor-in-chief of Comic Book Herald. You are listening to Crack and Krakoa number 97. This is parts 3 and 4, chapters 3 and 4 of the Ten of Swords event. An update for everybody, Crack and Krakoa fans. Crack and Krakoa number 100 will be live this Sunday, October 11th at 11 a.m. Central, noon Eastern, with special guest rapper Open Mike Eagle. Check it out. We're going to be talking X-Men theories, answering listener questions. If you are interested in joining or checking things out, you can find the link in the show notes here or just on the channel as an upcoming stream. And hey, if you like the Comic Book Herald YouTube channel or Crack and Krakoa, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing. Sharing. Writer Ben Percy, artist Victor Bogdanovich, colors Matthew Wilson, and letters by Corey Pettit and Joe Caramagna across the two issues. Wolverine issue opens with Wolverine calling out Krakoa, and I appreciate his skepticism. I've been saying for a while that we don't really know what Krakoa is thinking in terms of how does it actually regard the mutants that live on the island. I think in in the most recent uh, you know example where Doug Ramsey was translating, Krakoa was like, "Yes, this is a fine and acceptable business arrangement," <laughs> which is not the most passionate display of affection. And again, why would he have it? So I don't know how Krakoa feels about all these mutants here, about how much more like bonding with Arako means to it. It intentionally, or Krakoa kept intentionally, the ex- external gate open that opens a path to Arako. As Wolverine says here, that means you wanted war. That's an interesting thing to call out. Definitely keep an eye on that. Elsewhere, Percy and team do a nice job summarizing Wolverine's history with the Miramasa Blade, which I laid out in full in my All the Swords episode of Kraken Krakoa. Which again, like, we're at this point in the Krakoa vs. Rocco tournament where everyone's hunting for their swords. If you want to know the story of all these swords, that video lays out all the history. I'll talk about it in brief in each of these episodes, uh, you know, each of these issue coverages. Percy's history of Wolverine and Miramasa is pretty directly channeling the language used in the sword's creation from past comics. And, our, you know, the, the line, for example, I wielded it like an angry god, is exactly what Miramasa tells him, I think, back in Wolverine Origins in the mid-2000s. So I do appreciate that streamlined sort of connective tissue of continuity from Wolverine's past and now into his current state. So... Through this, Wolverine knows he needs to find the blade. He stabs Silver Samurai until he'll tell him where <laughs> what he knows about the blade. Silver Samurai begrudgingly gives him some information. And essentially what we find is Miramasa has gone missing. So Wolverine hits the street searching for him. There's a beggar whispering kimono, which translates to beast, actually. And we see throughout this, you know, language recurringly saying, okay, it's going to be the beast of the hand that is that is connected to his disappearance. In terms of characters represented on this data pages, uh, Kiyoshi Sato doesn't have a Marvel history. I could find but he is a g-force lieutenant in godzilla vs. space godzilla and godzilla was a part of the marvel universe in the late 70s so in my head we're one step closer to getting godzilla in this event uh, more familiar though mariko yoshida is wolverine's love interest most prominently seen in the pages of the claremont and frank miller wolverine four issue mini from 1982 the blowfish line here uh, particularly stands out because mariko was poisoned this way in an early 90s wolverine comic and wolverine had a mercy killer by request so she didn't die slowly from the poison more recently though in old man logan the ongoing uh, mariko is resurrected by the hand to become their scarlet samurai which is which is what she's referencing here as well and, and i expect we'll see more of that in the Percy run of Wolverine moving forward. The Hand's Beast, for what it's worth, he's a literal demon of hell, introduced in the avant-garde superhero fever dream Electra Assassin by Frank Miller and Bill Sienkiewicz, which for my money is the most menacing demonic presence probably we'll ever get, but more recently we've seen the Beast utilized somewhat heavily in the pages of the Charles Soule written run on Daredevil. So this search for Miramasa intertwined with the Hand Ultimately, you know, Logan goes and investigates some hand nonsense. It takes Wolverine to literal hell, and not for the first time, as fans of Jason Aaron's Wolverine Hell arc will, of course, remember. As Miramasa tells Wolverine once he gets to hell and, and heals off that nice, you know, hellish lava pit, says there's no greater forge than hell because there is no greater blast furnace than hell. So it's not exactly all dreams come true because Miramasa is literally kept against his will and being tortured in hell, but also he found a dope blast furnace to make all of his really cool swords, so... You know, kind of a win there. The Mad Sword Maker, he is being held to account for all the souls he's kept from the Beast 
and hell. Uh, you know, so it, Miramasa, part of his deal is he imbues people's souls into his swords. That's what makes him so strong. And uh, the demons are kind of mad about this because they wanted those souls, <laughs> which which checks out. Sure. So they are now making him to make their own weapons. Elsewhere in Araco, Pestilence and War, the, the children of Apocalypse, horsemen of Apocalypse, go to visit Solom, who has been kept in a prison pit in Araco for 100 years. And we learn here that Solom, who's one of this new, the new sword bearers, totally new character, uh, he killed War's husband, a.k.a. Summoner's father, and wields a Hellblade, a dagger taken from War's husband named Bracken. Also apparently plays a heck of a banjo. Uh, maybe a uke. Solemn is a necessary evil for even Apocalypse's children, and he's sent off to find Miramasa, but has no idea what that is, which is kind of funny <laughs> and pretty good. Uh, I was theorizing, you know, in the All the Swords video, like, okay, how, why is Miramasa listed on both the Krakoa and Arako sides? How did the Swordmaker get a blade to Arako if they weren't visiting Earth or weren't able to do that? And the answer here is he didn't. <laughs> and that didn't happen, and Solemn is just going to have to find him for the first time, literally hearing for him for the first time. In this story, uh, Solemn as a character, he's a little Jamie Lannister before losing his hand. You know, like there's a there's a roguish arrogance, but it's it's kind of charming. It's kind of devilishly charming, right? And he pulls it off extremely well. I think like we get a a limited but essential burst of info on this character who Marvel has been teasing as the new arch-villain of Wolverine, which is pretty heavy talk, considering that Wolverine's rogues galley isn't exactly empty. And uh, for example, Sabretooth, I think would pretty consistently and canonically be considered Wolverine's arch nemesis. Now, of course, as we know from House of X, Sabretooth is in a pit somewhere never to be seen again. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Uh, so we need Solemn to enter the scene, uh, apparently as his new nemesis. And it kind of works. I mean, I was skeptical of Solemn, but he's a pretty instantly engaging villain for Wolvie. Like, I like this character. He's charming. He's interesting. He, and I think most importantly, he avoids the violent animal, but more trap that, you know, Sabretooth and the like already occupy. You know, there's a tendency with Wolverine villains or with Wolverine threats to just make them even bigger and more violent. And I actually think, you know, these this character who is um, it devilish, you know, some call him a devil, but the devil deals in evil. His personal agenda is pleasure and gamesmanship. Like, he's out here having fun, but simultaneously he's amazing at fighting and looks forward to this tournament. So, and and is absolutely ruthless, right? Like, psychopathically ruthless. So, I'm super intrigued by Solemn. I will also call out, you know, on this data page about the trial of Solemn, there's an interesting redaction here where it says the blank had all been wronged by Solemn in some manner. I mean, from the context of the text, it sure seems like it's talking about the children of Apocalypse um, or potentially the Summoners since this is his father who was killed. You know, it could be the Summoners had all, all been wronged. But again, those are things we know, so I don't, I don't totally know why those would be redacted. In his hell prison, Wolverine finds an already waiting Solemn who is deliciously eager to meet his new cellmate and future challenger. Solemn has adamantium skin, which is precisely the kind of simple comic book solve for Wolverine's claws needed in an increasingly engaging villain. I will say that I quite enjoyed these two issues, but there's little use pretending it's not a two-chapter Wolverine story. You know, up to this point, Percy has generally maintained both connections and separation between X-Force and Wolverine. They're better when you're reading both, but you don't literally have to. Obviously, you don't literally have to read any comics. So I hear. Whereas in X-Force number 13, it's simply the concluding chapter to a Wolverine story. Again, part of the Ten of Swords contract is submitting to this all-or-nothing proposal of a 22-chapter event, and I'll talk about that a little. But if you're just reading Ten of Swords, you'll probably be just fine from context, you know, but you're clearly missing chapter one, right? If you read just the X, or I mean, if you're just reading the X-Force bit, like that's a series you're reading, I mean, you'll get what's happening, but Wolverine sets it up very deliberately. And from memory, there's nothing else X-Force related that <laughs> happens in this book like i don't think we see any other members of that team uh miramasa makes two blades for a demon wedding ceremony and he is then stabbed with them uh, uh at the ceremony and they are imbued with his soul so again this fully cements how krakoa and Araco each have a blade from the the master sword maker available to them and there's a distinction here that the blades are not the same weapon the same miramasa blade that wolverine wielded previously in marvel history which had a piece of his soul and which was used i think most recently in the pages of all new wolverine turned first into bullets and then into a miramasa armor uh no no that was a different that was that was using uh laura kinney in deccan's soul um, by Miramasa. So that's actually a different thing. But that's in the Orphans of X story, which is which is cool and worth reading. But these are different. These are different sorts. Um, Solemn takes both blades, 
in the, you know, kind of in the melee, but he offers one to Wolverine for a price. Now, we don't know what Wolverine had to give up, but he did and now has his sword, which I have to say, given the little that we know about Solemn, cannot be a good thing, right? There's no way he did that for a small cost. The other tease here, you know, the Beast is none too happy with these Wedding Crashers, and while I don't necessarily expect to see him again in Ten of Swords, I will bet he's a major player in future Wolverine arcs, uh, especially given just kind of the character's connections to the hand throughout history. At the end of the day, we have our second sword retrieved. Magic already had the soul sword, so she's been waiting in the select your player lobby for what feels like weeks now, which is just the comic schedule. I suppose it's only been like a day in Marvel time because they all have three days to collect all these swords. Now, I'm not sure the data page for the Miramasa sword offers us much new about the blade other than the reference to it as a key between worlds. I, I don't know that we've really seen it used in that um, in that context before, you know, like that it could actually transfer perhaps between Arako and Krakoa and certainly with other world in the mix, right? Going to other worlds is is an important thing. It's an available and possible thing for these characters at the moment. So that'll be interesting to see developed as well. While it's tempting to really dig into each region of Otherworld as the data pages are unveiled, especially when we're talking our boy Mad Jim Jaspers, I'm going to save all these together for a History of Otherworld overview once we have a page for each region. I will say that both the Crooked Market and Fury and Mercator, the realm mentioned in Marauders, continue to lay groundwork for interesting possibilities regarding multiversal reality refugees, aka what does Krakoa do with the mutants of the multiverse? Likewise, Hickman's Secret Wars influence is very strong in these pages, with residents of the Crooked Market fleeing incursions from his 2015 Marvel event. Otherwise, since both the Cricket Market and In Fury reference elements of the Alan Moore and Alan Davis run on Captain Britain, I really recommend checking out my deep dive into that run if you haven't read it, and all the surprise Ten of Swords connections that will enhance your read of this event. It's very clear that the, the Marvel staff is interested and engaged with that mythos of Captain Britain, and you can't really get it anywhere else um, as effectively as that run. So I definitely enjoyed reading these chapters. Uh, I do think we're likely to find that Ten of Swords can be greatly reduced for fans less addicted to reading every issue. And by reduced, I mean, like, you probably don't need to read all of this. Every issue between X-Factor number four and the middle Ten of Swords uh, creation of, uh, issue has the potential to be a hero hunts for sword story, which, if you're strapped for time, cash, or whatever, can likely be pretty easily skipped for the main plot. Again, this is theory. Don't get me wrong, you'll not only miss good comics doing this, but a lot of important characterization as well, right? If you skip Wolverine and X-Force, you won't have the same feel for Solemn. But otherwise, I'm kind of guessing the essential components of this event are going to be the bookend issues, X-Factor number four, and maybe the Excalibur and X-Men issues, since those are being written by, you know, Teeny Howard and Jonathan Hickman, who are co-writing the main event. Um, but, you know, those those could be sword gathering issues as well. So personally, I'm reading everything and it's worth it. But I know a lot of folks are worried about 22 chapters, so it feels worth calling out. Uh, next up is Marauders number 13, the issue that came out today. The Krakoan in the end of X-Force reads A Queen Return which of course teased uh, pretty clearly that Storm's going back to Wakanda, which I definitely called when I was talking about Skybreaker. Thanks everybody for listening. I'm Dave. You can find my stuff at comicbookherald.com or patreon.com slash comicbookherald if you are inclined to support. That would be greatly appreciated. You can find me at comicbookherald pretty much anywhere online. Look for the best comics ever in my Marvelous Year podcast. Otherwise, like I said, Marauders number 13 is chapter 5 in Ten of Swords. That'll be the next video coming up for me. And again, I have Crack and Krakoa live coming this this Sunday. Check that link out in the show notes if you would like to join as well. I think it'll be a pretty good time. So thanks everybody for listening and as always enjoy the comics.